This is a Game Caviar production. Not having in the Game Caviar Studios. This is the third take on this. All right, the last one. Ah, uh, it got hot in here. It gets hot in the in here when I make these videos, so I have to turn on the fan. Side note, I know. But anyway, in this video, I want to talk about the Xbox One and Apple. And I know you're kind of confused right now, and you're saying not having it. Those two things don't go together. Well, let me speak my mind on this topic, and maybe you can see how those two things kind of do go together. Anyway, I was talking to a co-worker of mine, a guy that I've known for a long time, a really cool guy. He came into me. He's a fan of Game Caviar. He said, look, I got an idea. I want you to look at what Steve Jobs had in mind for Apple before he died and see how that um, compare that to the Xbox One and see exactly how they match up. And I did. I did a lot of research for the past couple days. Actually, it's like three or four days, actually. And I really did a lot of Googling of Steve Jobs. I know that sounds weird how you Google Apple and Google and how you Google Steve Jobs, the, the head of Apple, and then Apple and everybody is against everybody. But anyway, uh, I did. Before Steve Jobs died, he had a, a biography done on him, which is cool. I would do the same thing. And in that biography, he, he, he repeated and he kept saying that he finally cracked it. He finally cracked it. He finally found a solution. Speaking of strictly technology, more importantly, a, a, a big product from Apple. And a lot of people speculated that what he was talking about was a way to eliminate all the extra equipment that people have in their in their living rooms. You got to think, you know, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people have at least a cable box and a DVD player, you know, and maybe a game system, a DVR, you know. Or HD PVR, like what I'm using to make these videos. The popular thought amongst a lot of people is that Steve Jobs actually found a way to incorporate all of that into one box. And that he wanted Apple to produce that, make that product a reality, and sell it. As also speculated as being the next gen Apple TV. Well, that's all fine. And that would be an amazing product if Apple ever put that out. But in the meantime, what happened was Microsoft came out with the Xbox One, which is not available yet. They announced it, though. And it's coming out this fall, you know, holiday season, whatever. And what Microsoft is really trying to do with the Xbox One is to make it the main component in everybody's living room that can replace a lot of other uh, boxes and equipment that people have to control different things. You got to think one box, one solution, one controller to take care of everything. And, and with Microsoft, with the new Xbox One, you have the, uh, the, the connect that you can Supposedly you can talk to it and it's really good really responsive to your voice and It can allow you to do everything without having to touch a remote at all It has an HDMI feed-through I believe it's called the way you connect it to your X I mean not your Xbox your cable box and it sits on top of your cable box and then you use it similar to like a, a Google TV almost Well, I'm not saying that Microsoft stole Steve Jobs vision I'm not saying that they didn't I don't know it seems eerily uh, familiar you know or or just strange how the Xbox one is 
on along the same lines of what Steve Jobs has speculated to have been working on before he passed away and what he wanted as the future of Apple. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. Companies come out with similar products all the time. It doesn't matter what what industry you look at. You know, everybody, you know, a lot of companies come out with computers. You know, cars, even products, you know. That's why you end up with generic brands of popular popular uh, food items. You know, it happens. But at the same time, I think that Microsoft had, it had really tripped itself up in a few ways. Mainly the uh, the DRM policies, just definitely. And I know they changed it, you know, but they changed it at the expense of features, you know, and uh, and you know, for me, I think that the initial shock and the anger of everybody that was thrown at Microsoft caused them to change their policies. But I think in the long run, they will be re-implemented. And um, I, I think that Microsoft is going to use the whole, you know, we want people to have the experience, the box as it is, you know, the whole, uh, this whole, the whole system as we planned it to be. So we need these policies type deal, but that's that's another topic. But I I understand where they're going. They want to advance the the next gen to to expand it more than just video games, which is cool. And I'm not gonna fault them for wanting to take the next step. But with them not uh, not thinking about the consumer. And what the consumer wants, it really screwed up their whole Xbox One situation. I mean, the Xbox One is still going to be very popular. It just is. You know, people love Xbox. They love the Xbox brand, and they love the Xbox 360. You know, it's sold, it outsold its competition for like 20-something months. And I'm not saying the Xbox One is just going to be a failure, of course. But they, they're not going to be able to... to uh, to really go to that next level with the Xbox One like they wanted to. And what what are, what's the reason why they're not going to be able to do that? You know, why not? Why can't they be why can't they do that? It's because of what happened. You saw what happened after E3. People just went absolutely ballistic on everything that they did. And then it didn't make it any better that Sony had the whole how to share a game on PS4, you know, you, you, you just, you, Microsoft really, they, they shot themselves in the foot, you know, and everything that was happening after that was just PR nightmare after PR nightmare, not saying that they didn't have a great product, the Xbox One could be an amazing product with amazing features, especially if it's slated to, you know, do exactly what it, what it, what they say it's going to do and replace all these other products in your living room. That's that's good. But if you cannot sell a product, then you know, the product is only as good as your marketing. And they did not do a good job of selling the Xbox One to the core gamer as well as the casual gamer, as well as the person who doesn't game but likes to have, you know, a simplicity in their uh, a simple system in their home in their home to where they don't have five different controllers for five different devices they spread out too much xbox is a gaming console first i mean that's just what it is where do you go to buy uh, uh, an xbox you go to like best buy gamestop target walmart whatever but you go in the electronics department and it's always by the games because it's a gaming system first and and i think that's Microsoft wanted to take it away from that genre, but you cannot. I, I feel as though that you cannot just, just take, just turn your back on what made you famous in the first place. You know, maybe they should have came out with two different versions of the Xbox One: one for gamers and one for casual gamers who don't want to have all this crap, and 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 just want to have a single solution for their living rooms. 
I don't know. Maybe that's what they'll do in the future. I don't know. I don't work at Microsoft. And another thing that I, I, I think really hurt them in this process is that, let's say that, and, uh, and this is all theoretical, but let's say they had inside information on what Steve Jobs was working on and they kind of beat him to it. It could have happened. Let's say in this world it did happen, in this theory. That's okay. And they made a product that, that incorporated everything that Steve Jobs had in his final vision for Apple as far as the next big product. But what hurt Microsoft is the fact that they're Microsoft, they're not Apple. See, Apple can come out with a phone like the iPhone 5 or let's say they come out with an iPhone 5S that's not really the same as the, that. that's like the iPhone 5 with only minor upgrades. It's going to sell out because everybody loves Apple. It's true. Just like the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S. What, what, what keeps people buying Apple computers is because they have that cult following. Like, people really love Apple products. And I will admit, I have used Apple products. I have a MacBook Pro. And Apple does make really good products. The thing that I didn't like about the iPhone is that it was too restrictive. And, and you know, I got tired of seeing the same thing over and over again. But... That's just me. A lot of people who have, I mean, Apple has diehard fans that will buy their product no matter what. The same cannot be said about Microsoft. I mean, do they have uh, diehard fans? Yes. Do they have companies that will always use Microsoft um, products? Yes. But in my opinion, I don't think that Microsoft really has a tight-knit group of diehard fans like Apple does. Honestly, I don't. Because I have seen lines of people line up on TV and on the news and everything for Apple products. And especially the iPhone. But uh, the only time I've ever seen somebody line up for a Microsoft product was for Xbox. Microsoft is very popular and they will continue to be popular. But they don't have that cult power that, micro that uh, Apple does. So when they come out with a next-gen gaming system, I'm doing the air quotes while I'm saying that, that doesn't really focus just on gaming, air quotes again, then they 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 lose a lot of that, that um, they lose a lot of fans, and fans start to question them, and what are they doing? Why are they doing this? Why are they not just focusing on games? And why are they overpricing their product uh, higher than their competition? When Sony is doing their their whole uh, bit of, hey, this is how you sell, this is how you let somebody borrow a game on X, I mean, on PS4, and they just hand the game to the next person. We don't have all this DRM, blah, blah, blah. This is a more powerful system. Look at our games. They're, they're beautiful. You can get all of this in a package that costs less than Microsoft, somebody who just came out with a product and forces you to do all this, you know, policies and at the same time makes you pay more for a system that's not centered on gaming. It's kind of crazy. Again, they did change their policies on DRM, but I think that they're going to go and make it again, you know, implement it spoonfuls, you know, a little bit at a time to it's back to how it was when they announced it at E3. But let me know what you think. Of course, we'll talk about it again. This is just my uh, Apple Xbox theory, you know, how Microsoft may have took the vision of Steve Jobs and incorporated it into the Xbox One and also how they really screwed themselves screwed themselves over by doing that. They redeemed themselves a little bit, but how is that going to hurt them or help them in the long run? Let me know, please. We'll talk about it. I'm not having it in the Game Caviar Studios, and I'm out. This has been a Game Caviar production. Like this video and subscribe for more.